See, Jordan, those are pancakes. This, this is a muffin or a biscuit at best. Not even a waffle, not even close to waffle. Welcome back, Deep Review TV viewers. Chris Nichols here, and today we're taking a quick look for our midweek short at the brand new Fuji GF 50mm 3.5. This is the smallest, most compact, and lightest lens that they've created for the GFX series. And I thought, why not throw on a 50R, wander around Calgary's Beltline area for a few hours, and just take some snaps. And when it comes to focusing, the first thing I actually like is the manual focus ring. It's buttery smooth. I like that it's behind this lip. It kind of necks down to the manual focus ring. And that makes it really easy to index and find with your fingers without looking at it. But of course, the autofocus also is very impressive. It's got a fast new linear motor. We tested it on the GFX100, which is the fastest focusing of the GFX cameras. And uh, very impressive from near to far distances. The focus is quick. Now when you see the 50mm 3.5 advertised on the net, they often use the marketing term pancake lens in quotation marks. And although this is quite compact, it's not a traditional sort of pancake optical formula. What I mean by that is, normally when you look at pancake lenses like the Canon 40mm 2.8 STM or the Pentax, which is also 40mm, or the Panasonic 20mm 1.7, they have very good but much more simple optical designs that really let the designers shave off a lot of bulk. This has a fairly complicated formula relative to those lenses, and uh, it's amazing that they still get it this small because all of that design really does give you a lens which has minimal breathing, very sharp results, and can easily handle the resolution of the GFX100. So let's get into a little bit of equivalency, shall we? That's always fun to do. The 50 millimeter focal length on this GF lens is gonna be very similar in classic full frame terms to a 40 millimeter 2.8. So that gives it, you know, basically a little bit tighter than 35, a little bit wider than 50. Doesn't really know where it wants to be, but you get used to it pretty quickly. And a lot of people even say it's actually more normal to the human eye's perspective than 50 millimeter, which we've already considered a normal lens up to this point. So certainly something to give a try on. If you have any questions or comments about equivalency that are positive, go on dpreview.com. If you have any hate mail about equivalency, just send those to Tony Northrup on Instagram. He'll love those direct messages. Ah yes, the classic battle between both the organic and the urban, the living and the metal, the duality of old versus new or some like that. It's got a tree in it. Now please keep in mind, we cannot really do any sort of scientific comprehensive testing out here, okay? But from the examples you've seen, first off, center sharpness seems very good, even wide open. And what was really surprising is the corners also hold together very, very well, as you can see here. Again, shot wide open, very decent performance. And I'm sure if you stop this lens down, you're gonna get as good as you're ever gonna want it to be. So optically, this lens does seem very sharp. Now we also did a very quick and dirty loca test, or a longitudinal chromatic aberration test. This is where you can see color fringing in the areas that are both in front of and behind your point of focus. And these can be notoriously difficult to get rid of. So as you can see here, it's there, but it's very well controlled and minor. Little bit of magenta cast on things in front of your subject, little bit of green cyan on things behind your subject, but very well controlled. So again, big pauses for this lens optically. Now, Jordan, I'm going to get in there because this lens is totally weather sealed, like completely. They advertise it all over the place. Oh, yeah, the camera's not, is it? Okay. Jordan, everybody's looking at me wondering why my legs are wet, but I guess as long as it's not from here down, I'm, I'm okay, right? 
Now, as you can see here, when it comes to bokeh in the lens, quite pleasing actually. You know, maybe a little bit of a harder, darker edge, but very smooth interiors. And even when stopped down, you still get a very nice round shape. So you're gonna like the bokeh for this. Now keep in mind, this is a little bit wider than what you normally want for portraits. So you're not gonna get large bokeh balls in the background. And with that half meter close focusing capability being roughly the exact same as the 63 millimeter, I do feel like that lens is gonna be a much better choice for portraits or of course, let's just be honest, get the 110. Regardless though, on this camera, even if the macro capability is not amazing, you are always gonna find this lens in front of a high resolution sensor, so you can crop the hell out of it. Okay, so to finish things off, this lens or the 63 millimeter? Well, the 63 millimeter is two thirds of a stop brighter, but it's also half a stop more expensive. So, you know, you can save a lot of money with the 50 millimeter 3.5 and optically I'd say it's just as good. It's rugged and although it's not by a huge margin, it is still the most compact and lightest lens on the market compared to that 63 millimeter for the GFX system. Now, if it were my money, I'd probably still let them going with the 63 millimeter. This is getting a little close to that 35 millimeter equivalent for my liking. I do like something a little bit tighter, and if you're gonna get more light in a lens that's still not that much larger, I think it's a good choice. However, keep in mind that if you want a good lens that you can carry around, save some money and maybe put that towards a 110 or a zoom or something, that could be a really good reason. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this little mini review on this lens. Uh, don't forget, please leave comments below. Let us know what you think on Instagram and and Twitter. Subscribe to the channel. It's right there. All we're asking is for you to hit one button. Thanks so much for joining us for this midweek short. We'll see you with another full review.